recording. Give it 10 seconds because it's a dick. Yes, it is. <laughs> Psycho said. Kane. Big boss man. Triple H. Rick Flair. The streak. Greetings, Grapple fans, and welcome to week two of the Lost Art of Wrestling Road to WrestleMania. WrestleMania, baby, woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's the big show when he's been awake a long time. When's our rage party? <laughs> we should totally do a rage party. We need to. I, I demand that we get the band that they got that drives around in a little scooter thing with a giant penis shooting come out of it. I demand it. You book it then. You're the booker. I'm delegating it to you. Mm, the talent doesn't need to get his hands dirty. <laughs> Paul, the other night off, Bunkle, you book it. <laughs> 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 it's back for week two. If you didn't, if you missed week one, we covered parts one to five of the streak, or should I say victims one to five of the streak. This week, with week two, we're covering victims six through to ten. That's a lot of victims. It is. Yeah. And I'm not alone. My guest at this time, or well, my co host at this time, co host and comrades, first of all, he's the baddest man, the baddest man, the baddest man in professional wrestling. Science Hill delivered. He is formerly a Dazzler. Billy the Boy of Uncle. How we doing? The audio gold. Old. Absolutely. I've got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. He's, he's, by, he's chomping at the bit here. I kind of am, actually. Once we, once we get past this like first set of shit, then uh, we get into the good stuff. You clearly don't mean um, you clearly don't mean the third match, surely of today. No, definitely not. <laughs> and in the corner to my right, he is a man who is half, half a man. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked your timing up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem when I can't see you, and vice versa. True. The sort of guess. Raise his fist up at the screen. Damn you, Skype! Um, so we turn video on. We could turn video on, but I have no camera. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no camera. There's me, there's me and Bunkle and just rad live. Yeah. Just a big red alive logo. I, I have two faces on my screen. Bunkle raised his thing up. His notes up to the screen. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do the same. I have no camera. <laughs> just get, get yourself down to Poundland or wherever you go, Paul, and find one. I'm just trying to find one in the bins. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's Paul, the hat guy, Flinders. It's not a hat guy anymore. It's the flaming I'm, grill. I'm the flaming grill. Even that's debatable. We are debating that at this moment in time. We've come to the conclusion on the last R.O.D. podcast that we recorded at this point. It was like, um, yeah, it's free advertising. I'm not getting paid. I want burgers. <laughs> that's true. We need burgers. We need sponsors. We do need sponsors, yes. Maybe, maybe we could be sponsored by the Dazzler shop. Be Dazzled or whatever it's called in Cleveland's. Wait, what? Yeah, there's a shop called the Be Dazzled in Cleveland's. Be Dazzled or Be Jazzled? Might be both. <laughs> it's, where, it's where the Dazzler goes for his bejazzles. 
the bedazzled. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, right, let's jump into it. Yeah. So we're going to take you back to the 23rd of March, 1997, for WrestleMania 13. It's Psycho Sid versus The Undertaker. Oh, absolute classic. Um, I wouldn't go. I, well, I probably wouldn't go with classic. Notably, the first match is the Roman numerals. It's also yeah. the first mania to have Russo in putting in booking. Ah, also oh, that would explain the Bret Hart promo. Yeah, and it's the first the first mania match for Taker going for the WWF Championship as well. So it's the first heavyweight championship match. It also explains why everyone's pretty much just fucking training on this pay per view. Mm. Yeah, to be fair, it's 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 fair to point out that it's his first title match actually because he's not. He's always been pushed like it seems rel- like he's relatively important, but this is the first time they've actually gone, yeah, he is a main event guy. And that is his first main event as well. Well, it's his first Mania main event. That's mm. I, don't, I wouldn't know about anything before that. Well, yeah, that's what I mean, first Mania main event. But they, they did fuck this up from the beginning, though, to me. Bret Hart comes out and cuts a promo... Well, and it's fucking terrible. I guess they just jump back on it to why it's Taker said for the belt. Uh, Shawn Michaels vacated the belt three days prior to In Your House in February. So they had a four-way, which is Taker, Brett, Vader, and Austin. Uh, Brett won, but they lost to Sid on Raw the following night. But Hart and Austin continued the feud, but then Undertaker, it says, Undertaker left a challenge, for it was free to challenge Sid. So what that left Vader doing, I have no idea. Eating burgers. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Thinking about squashing Dave Ray. <laughs> mm. No, well, that's, it's a bit shit, really. When Even then, like you think Bret Hart, a one-day champ. Why? Yeah. You know what I mean? Just to, That's just pointless booking. It's basically some guy refused to drop the belt to this other guy, so you had to put a tweener guy in. Which is really annoying. But, you know, like I say, when Hart comes out and cuts the, this promo, I've not written down anything that he says in the promo. I've just thought it was fucking awful. And the crowd cheers when he gets power bombed. So I was like, hmm, I thought he was a baby face, but clearly he isn't. <laughs> He's a whiny bitch heel from Canada. Yeah. I've noted for myself, I noted that you got Michael's coming out for commentary. Sid manages to watch another live promo backstage. It's the biggest event of the year, world. <laughs> <laughs> so strange to see a sea of light as well than the throne screens nowadays when the lights go out. Yeah. Uh, Taker comes out first and he's lonesome because there's no Paul Bearer after he yep. turns on Taker with Smith on 96. I would say it's his first Mania without Bearer. Uh, Jim Ross actually mentions Taker has never lost at Mania. Yep, that as well. First oh, time mention, that. yeah, it's the first mention of the space of well, of an undefeated streak. It wasn't called the streak at this point, the undefeated streak. So, yeah. um, I also put Sid is a very wet man. Well, Vince notes something about what Sid said in his promo beforehand, where he's sort of going from shouting to them whispering, uh, which is Vince. The thing about Psycho Sid is he's not afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't scare me on the ticket I am not afraid of the dark I am so, the boogeyman Woo. thing to say about Sid so he's like yeah he's not afraid of the dark fucking hell um, Sid with a bit of mixed, mixed reaction and then as I noted Taker looks a bit strange he's like someone's taking the head of the actual era Taker and stuck it on the body of the career Taker like you could do yeah. on Smack 2 <laughs> yeah Yes, yeah. I'll go with that. It's 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 at that po- it's at that point where he's like it's like his gimmick's starting to evolve that bit again. You know how we were talking about it evolved last time when he actually had like the bit of the pyro and whatever it was. Yeah. It's like again this time like they've they've evolved his look again a little bit more. It enables his transition to where we go mm. with you know. So I mean I don't I'm you know I was all right with that it's I thought I thought Sid was he seemed I felt like he was over 
Like I know you said that it gets a bit of a mixed reaction, but I felt like the, the crowd did actually want to see Sid. You know what I mean? It's not like they just, oh, here's this bum. He, well, he was playing, it was sort of like, with him though, the way he'd boxed, it was sort of like trainer lessons with Sid. Yeah, yeah. Like, Brett's gone heel turn, because um, like, I know you said you didn't make any notes of his promo, but I know and he comes out and he sort of take her, Michaels, and particularly Sid, because he came and Sid screwed about the title. But then Sid goes to throw a haymaker that even Steve, Steve Wonder could see coming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. It made Bret Hart look a bitch, but he was a bitch. Yeah, that's the whole that was the point of it, really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, was, he, was, he was being booked to be the whiny, like, fucking guy that couldn't take it. But then Taker goes a bit heelish and attacks him from behind before the bell. Yeah, which I don't know. I don't know whether it's hard to say. I don't know whether take. I, I, I'm guessing Taker was a babyface at the time, but his character again. It's it's he's always played one or the other. But you either love him or you hate him. Really, he is like Marmite. I can't say I've ever been his biggest fan, but you know that doesn't mean that I don't understand that he's successful. Yeah, that's fair. I'd say that's fair. Uh, so, yeah, got noted. So, he tacks him around, gets him in the corner, a few shots full up with a knee followed by a splash, body slam, cover on the other two. Uh, goes for old school, but Sid just locks him in a bear hug. Yeah. Slams him over the top, but then he lands on his feet. Yeah, I just noticed it. I noticed, I noted, blah, blah, blah. I felt like it was a very low, a very slow pace, and consider it was no DQ as well. I didn't think they were like very, you know, there wasn't as much bending the rules as I would have expected. No, I agree. There was bits I thought, like when he slams him into the uh, the railings and stuff in the announce table spot. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, yeah. They say there was that, but it was just a bit. I don't know. It felt cumbersome. But then again, I don't. I've not seen enough of Psycho Sid to know whether it's just him, you know, whether you have that he has to wrestle slow and people wrestle him slow. Do you know what I mean? Like I know Taker can pick up the pace when he wants to. But I think this part of Sid's gimmick is the fact he's it's just he's meant to be like a slow, methodical pace. I think if anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed as well with Sid, well, you're obviously talking about methodical and this other. There was a lot of um, Taker selling his back in this as well. A lot of attention and sort of like moves to Taker's back. Yeah. Well, it's setting up for the power bomb, isn't it? Yeah. Which which is good, but I did know there was a fucking shoulder claw. Mm. I fucking hate that move. Talk about destroying kayfabe. Fuck you now. What? What's he doing? It's a claw. No, he's massaging his trapezius. <laughs> <laughs> Continue joking about his tradition. WrestleMania is traditional, locking your trapezius old. Uh, uh, <laughs> just thrilling. Jesus Christ. No, it, it, thrilling. I actually wrote the word ew <laughs> when I saw that move. Ew. ew. <laughs> I could just, just really like see you sat on your couch going, oh, no, <laughs> like looking away, going, tell me when it's over. You <laughs> sat there going, I, I think it's over. It's You're like, looking through one eye, just going, no, it's not. <laughs> it's like when you, it's like when you, like poking a lettuce that you've just kind of pulled out of the back of the fridge, so it's half frozen, half gone off. It's like <laughs> it's kind of solid, kind of gooey, and it's like I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Just horrible. I can't say I get this metaphor. I'm just going to nod and smile politely. <laughs> God. But well, Sid fights out of the claw. <laughs> and then we get a double big boot, which is a spot I've never really liked. It's because it kind of looks like a fuck up. Yeah. Well, maybe that's just me. Yeah, I, I, it... I'm guessing they're both because it's they're both like big guys. I'm guessing they're both some wanting to do some different, more double clothesline, but the double clothesline. Yeah. 
Yeah, as I say, I don't, I, I don't mind trying to come up with something different, especially when Taker doesn't do like a normal clothesline. He always does that flying one, which you can't really, you know, can't do. really counter much to that, really. Exactly. So I, I didn't mind it. It was just, I don't know. It just, I don't know if it's just me. Like I, I it was one of the few bits in the Diesel match that I was a bit like, uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll accept it, but. So it was a bit yeah. of dumb. There was a little dumb booking at this bo- this point as well. Obviously, you had the double big boot both down. Yeah. So they're both down, they're, but the referee's counting. Yeah. To which point, there's a two count for Sid where he leans over. But, well, if you obviously go trying to, you know, suspend disbelief and things like that, suspend your belief, he's just basically just cost himself the match. And the reason being is, well, I put this as a dumb booking. Taker was down for the 10 count and would not have made it to his feet. Yeah. Had Sid covered, but then Sid covered him. This should have been done at seven or eight as Sid looked stupid for going for the cover when he could have just won. Yeah, yeah, because it's one of them. Like, it's, yeah. you know, did, did the guy get, was it just, you know, you know mistiming? You know, was he actually meant to get there at six? You know, would it took him a couple more seconds to scramble up? You know, it's one of them where I I can see why people would think it's stupid. And obviously watching it back, it looks daft. But, you know, I think when the adrenaline's going and stuff, you can almost make an excuse for it. That he yeah, I suppose. He didn't, he didn't want to win, like, in a cheap way. He wanted to pin the guy and, you know... Look like a proper fighting champion. Look like a yeah. Suppose you know, that would as that suppose that would have been in character in a way. Yeah, what to look like a hero? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but no, it was. To be fair, I, I didn't think the match was that bad. Considering like you know, I've given out on it a little bit to be honest. But you know, I didn't think it was too bad. No, it weren't that you bad. Know. You know, was, take, was, Taker broke out the top rope clothesline, which is, you know, I, I think that was the first time we've seen him do it, actually. He's at Mania. Top rope, at yeah. Mania, yeah. And, I mean, Sid keeps going for these axe handles off the second rope, which, again, I, I'm guessing it's a Sid thing, you know. But when, when, you, when you're when you on to your fourth one, come <laughs> on, man, pick a different move. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. So... Yes, Taker goes for the tombstone. Sid reverses and tries to mock the the fact they take a pin, but Taker kicks out. Which I know, to be fair, I liked that because that's the first time we've seen Taker get tombstoned. Mm. And it's the first time that he's actually looked like he might lose at Mania as well. He's never looked in danger until now. So, well, maybe a bit against, you know, Diesel, you know, right at the end. But again, he sat straight up out the first power bomb. Whereas this time he was actually down for a two, a mm. long two. So, uh, so Bret Hart returns. Yeah. Next, Richard. Bunkle's looking displeased. Yeah, I think. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck Bret Hart. I don't. I've never been a fan of Bret Hart. I think we've we've had this discussion, haven't we? It's like, yeah, he's majorly overrated. Majorly I overrated. I think he is. I, I can't. I can't. I don't see it. I just don't see it. I, like I was listening to um, another podcast of the week, and they were reviewing some like new generation stuff and whatnot. And one of them absolutely loves Bret Hart. He thinks he is like the pinnacle of wrestling, basically. And I, I just like, what are you watching? Like, I, I mean, I've watched Bret Hart matches. I've watched you know some of the the best matches he's ever had. And I just don't see it. I don't see what's so good yeah, about he's, him. I mean, he's capable. Don't get us wrong. Be oh, wrong. No. He is capable, but he's He's, he's extremely not all neat and tidy. He is a neat and tidy wrestler. A neat and tidy technical wrestler. Yes. Is he technically as good as Kurt Angle is? No. No. Is he technically as good as Chris Benoit was? No. So... He's not that good. Mm. He's a technical wrestler who, for the time, probably was the best technical wrestler at the time. Yeah, he probably he but made it, very he made very few mistakes. Yeah, but it's not yeah. lived on. 
you know. So I I don't know. I, I, I just I don't like him, and I think his promos drag him down so far. And then you watch his WCW shit, and it's just like, oh god. Can you can you not even you're not even wearing the pink and black for fuck's sake? You come out in a hockey top, you fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, you, you started in the pink and black, and then hey, whatever you tapped Alex Luger, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, he stopped. Gave, he, I think he stopped giving a fuck at some point, didn't he? Clearly, clearly, yeah, in 1997 when he joined WCW, exactly, <laughs> definitely, definitely, uh, because it was like he joined WCW, he's gonna fight with Hogan, never happened. Anyway, less about Bret Hart because he's ruining this. So, ruined yeah. this match. Ruined it. Taker goes to choke Slam Sid. Kicks out. Goes for a flying clothesline, but Sid avoids it and goes for the powerbomb. Bret runs in again and uh, gets the distraction on Sid, which allows Taker to scoop to tombstone him for the three in the title. With the world's slowest three count by Earl Hebner. Yeah. <laughs> it was Taker's first mania moment. Yeah, first championship he wins at Mania. It might well be, but it's not a Mania moment because Bret Hart ruined it. (laughs) Yeah, it's tainted. Fuck off, off, Bret. His second championship, but his first Mania main event as well in 21-19. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put, because I I obviously wrote, wrote a paragraph for every match and my little paragraph was not as good as his match with Diesel, but it wasn't bad. Probably second best match so far, but over but over his career it would be to me at least a fairly middling mania match in his career. That being said, it is a watchable match, but too long was spent in certain holds, such as the bear hug. Yeah. So a decent story was being told revolving around Taker's back. I say, I'm inclined to agree. I I. I kind of I did enjoy this match until the end. Mm. Uh, I hated the end. I hated the beginning. Um, but overall, I, you know, I felt satisfied with the two big guys. You know, I, I didn't I didn't expect a massive pace, but I didn't you know like them flying around. Um, I maybe had a bit of high hopes, and I watched this straight after I watched the Diesel match, and the Diesel match was did have really like a fast pace for two such big guys, especially at the beginning. So I was hoping for a bit more of that. But, you know, Sid does make sense. He's a bit more methodical and takes his time a bit more. But Bret Hart fucking ruined this. Bret Hart absolutely ruined this. If it wasn't for the dog shit promo at the beginning and then coming in and ruining the end, literally ruining the end. At the end of the day, Sid dropping the title to take her I don't. I don't see why Taker needs help. I don't see why that you need to throw in this fucking knobhead. Yeah. Right at the end. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, Taker was undefeated at Mania. He's a former champion. He's been there. You know, he's been at the top of the mountain. Sid. You know, I'm guess. I don't know. I'm guessing this was his first title. It. it e- either way, it's a match that. You don't need the interference. Mm. It, you know, t- if if there was no interference, Sid still comes out looking strong. What you've tried to do is you've tried to make Sid look sh- look like, oh well, he would he wasn't he wouldn't have lost the title, he wouldn't have lost. But if, if it wasn't for Bret Hart, but now we have to do Sid versus Bret Hart, so Taker can go roll under the belt. Well, no. At the end of the day, what should actually happen is, well. Taker now has to face Sid again, but with that Bret Hart band from ringside, which means we'd actually get the match we want to see, but now we're watching it on Raw instead of the pay-per-view that we've just paid 40 quid for. I'm sorry, fuck you, I've just paid 40 quid for that. I expect a proper finish. I want it done how it needs to be done. (laughs) Bro, bro. (laughs) Swerve, bro. I put Bray in that match because, bro, let me tell you something. That said guy, he didn't know how to work. I'm wrong. <laughs> Just, God. 
Sorry, my, I've finished ranting now. <laughs> Coxie can have an opinion. <laughs> this, this, bro, my opinion is literally this. With OK, I find it slow going at points. <laughs> um, this is also rumoured to be the match where uh, uh, Sid apparently shit himself after the tombstone. Oh, nice. That's fantastic news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, absolutely brilliant but no um, I've actually I've given it two scores I've given it my actual score and my without Bret Hart score Um, (laughs) my actual score I gave it one and a half coffins my without Bret Hart score I gave it three coffins so Bret Hart equals a minus one and a half coffins I thought you would have given it um I thought you would have given it possibly seven coffins out of five, but we minus four with, you know, you, you know, four, you know, because you minus the four for Bret Hart. Because he's obviously, you know, four out of ten. Yeah, yeah. He is a solid four out of ten. Yeah. Uh, you know, we equals three. So, yeah, but I, I agree. Three, three, <laughs> three caskets out of five. I originally gave it three, but I have to, like, bungle that mini run. I dropped it to two. <laughs> God damn it, you made him rant and waste time. <laughs> Why damn you? <laughs> I want it done. How it needs to be done. <laughs> it's yeah. oh. uh, So, yeah. Any more thoughts on that one, Paul? Or No, just um, it was... It's like I agree with everything Bunkle said. Fuck it, move on. Well, <laughs> just yeah, I mean, at this moment in time, obviously, you've got to think about the six matches that we've had so far. It's probably the second best we've had so far. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I'd say it's probably one, probably one of the more distinctly average matches of the paper, of, a, of the streak, up, you know, somewhere well, in the middle. Yeah. So... Uh, so yeah, we'll jump ahead to the 29th of March, 1998, for WrestleMania 14. It's The Undertaker versus Kane. Mm. And it's the first streak match of the Attitude Era. Yes, it is. Beginning yeah. at uh, Bad Blood in Your House, which was the Hell in a Cell between Shawn Michaels and Taker. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taker pretty much had the match won. The lights went out, and this mashed... Man came to the ring, revealed to be Undertaker's kayfabe half brother, and uh, Taker vowed never to find his little brother. Because luckily, with this re- this WrestleMania, you got all the backstory before the match. Yeah, yeah we actually got a promo just... package. Yeah, yeah, you you need it for this shit. <laughs> yeah, it was well, the fir- it was the first, like I said, it was the first um, promo package of obviously you know any. Well, we got a bit of a promo package for a couple of them. Um... Did we got? Did we get a promo package for Jake Roberts or something like that? Yeah, yeah, Jake. He got a little bit of a promo at the beginning. Yeah, so it was like a, but this was like a first proper, like fully fledged, like proper backstory telling you everything that's gone on. Feud. Yeah, like a feudal sort of thing. It was like, and they all, I also put the comment on it saying they don't make promos as good as this anymore. Well, pretty much the thing to take away from it is. There's a lot of fire. <laughs> yes, there's lots and lots of fire. Lots of fire. <laughs> lots, of, lots of barbecue. I can just see Bunkle reaching to his fridge. Bunkle is in his fridge. <laughs> He's probably looking for something to put on the fire for the barbecue. Is it Bret Hart? It could be Bret Hart, yes. <laughs> it's not Bret Hart, it's an energy drink. Um, Especially enough, it's not an energy drink, but there we go. Oh! I have quit. You've quit energy drinks? Yes. I have forced myself to. <laughs> yes, no. I'm trying not to die in my 30s. Ah, fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, getting back on topic. Yes. So, yeah. Taker and Michaels had a casket match uh, with DX claiming Kane had joined the X at one point. 
And at the Royal Rumble 1998, uh, Kane came to the ring, locked the Undertaker in the casket before setting it on fire. And uh, smashing it with an axe. That was before the Rumble. No, no, during the Rumble. No, he set it, set it on fire. And then uh, Kane challenged his brother. Uh, Undertaker challenged Kane to a match in Mania. Uh, and then just batshit crazy stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. This is like the lightning and the fire and the stuff like that, isn't it? This is where it gets they get magic powers. Yeah, it's like take like Kane, but he set, uses lightning on the Titan Tron. They set a crew member on fire. Uh, like lightning strikes it, strikes a casket, and Taker appears out of it, and all that sort of shit. So, because mm. oh, yeah. they now have superpowers, folks. <laughs> He's gone from actually being a guy who is undead. And buries people to a guy who now has lightning powers yeah, and he's buries a, people. He's become a Sith like, Lord. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, he was he was undead. How do how does an undead man control lightning? Well, uh, his character developed. What? <laughs> Explain this to me, goddammit. Maybe maybe this is what's going to happen in the Walking Dead next. This is what, how they're going to get viewers back. They're all <laughs> they're going to start shooting lightning out the palms of their hands. Oh, that they're going to hire Mark Halloway and, Jen- and Glenn Jacobs, and they're going to be the two big bads. I'm <laughs> acting like there have been, been like a production meeting of Vince, like, so uh, what do you have in mind for the for the uh, the feud leading up to WrestleMania? And Vince Russo is like, well, bro, bro, fire, lightning, superpowers, and Vince is just like, what the fuck. <laughs> Do you think? Do you think Vince accidentally, uh, Vince accidentally shocked himself on a faulty uh, light switch and thought, oh, "Gimmick change." Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how he accepted that the, this could be booked. Like, I get that he's, you know, the characters are larger than life, and you know, stuff like that. And I get, you know, but it's like, how would you? How could you book these guys even like in the eighties? It's like where where characters are supposed to be crazy. It's like the Mountie versus the Undertaker. Wait a minute. One of them has superpowers. The other one is a Canadian man who lives in the mountains. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Super. Well, uh, yes, he, 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 superpowers, you know. <laughs> but here's the thing as well. If you had superpowers, it was an ODQ match. Why didn't you just fucking fire it? Fire, just... Fire a lightning bolt out the sky. That's, that's with, the, with that, like, Mountie versus the Taker. It should be the space inch, like, Taker versus Border Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> Taker's stuck in Canada. Oh, oh dear me. My task. For sake. Loses a mania that way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't mind it. I will suspend my disbelief. Yeah. It's, well, was... It is... It's like the epitome of crazy booking in wrestling, really. You know, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but fuck it, we'll do it anyway. Yeah. It's... It'll be so over the top, it's cool. It's like Rocky Raccoon. It's fine. Standard. So, yeah, uh, Pete Rose comes out of the special guest ring announcer. Oh, God. Turns heel on the Boston crowd, making fun of their shortcomings in baseball. Yeah, it was a cheap heelish promo from Rose. Dot, 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 dot. Someone's going to kill him. Uh, to be fair, nobody outside of that stadium understands what that fuck he's on about. Well, this is it. He takes, so you've got this promo. You've got all this momentum. You've got, shit, this is going to be awesome. This match. Then Pete Rose comes out and takes all the steam out of the moment. Yeah. The problem is, like though, a fucking like, cunt. over here at the time, like, baseball, like, you'd have to have, like, fucking... A, a, Friggin' multiple Sky Sports TV package or whatever to be able to even see like a game. Never mind know what was going on in baseball. Mm. I so, wouldn't mind, but you can't watch it now because it's that boring. No, I just mean to be able to actually know what he's going on about. Like, like you had it on pay per view over here or something at the time, or even if you're watching on a home video at the time, like no idea what he's on about baseball. This uh, is it. So yeah, Kane comes out, tombstones him, pretty much a running gag for the next few manias. Yeah. But I, I, I didn't get this. 
I had a problem with this. I had a huge problem with this because, um, like I said, I put pretty, like I said, okay, but obviously I put down, obviously Kane comes out. Um, and I also put as well, Kane, his original Kane is easily the best Kane. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. It, goes, it, go, it goes downhill after the year 2000. Goes downhill after this match. Yeah. Um, then obviously at this point, with while he's while he's in the ring with Pete Rose, he's like he's got an absolutely awesome presence in the ring at this point. But then obviously, predictably, he's kill Pete Rose gets you know tombstoned or killed or get predictably killed by thing. But I've put in capital letters genius as in sarcasm. And the reason <laughs> I have a problem with this is. Would have made a lot more sense for Undertaker to come out first and attack Pete Rose. Especially yep. if you're going to take him out with a tombstone pile driver. Having Kane attack and get the face style pop puts his heel momentum at risk. Which certainly is not worth it, especially at WrestleMania. And I will 100% agree. Kane is the heel. Yeah. Why? So Pete Rose comes out and cuts a heel promo and gets attacked by a heel. Mm, don't worry. It, 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 bad looking. It's really bad because it potentially takes the whole steam out of his character, and essentially you've got two baby faces fighting against each other. And why are you fighting? If you're both baby faces, you're both brothers. Why are you not teaming up? Yeah. At this exactly. point. So it's it's dumb. Utterly, utterly dumb. It's unfortunate because I actually kind of had high hopes for this match. Like, I, I didn't start, I started watching wrestling way after this. But, you know, go, going on from there, like, Kane actually seemed like a bit of a threat, like, in that promo package and stuff like that. And especially when the match starts, and it's like, it's not that it's, I wouldn't say it was like a super fast pace or anything. It was just, you know, Taker tries to get the upper hand. Kane no sells. Kane yeah. in control. Taker tries to fight back. Choke slam. One two, and Kane stops covering him. Wait a minute, what? Mm. Kane won. Kane could have. Like, it, 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 Kane obviously kayfabe, but Kane had the match won in like two minutes, and decided not to pin him. Wait, what? Just win the fucking match. Bullshit. <clears throat> Just to cut back to the start, um, this is also the main year where the Druids make their debut. Yeah. The entrance. Oh, it, yeah. It's, it's first ministry take appearance as well. Um, but you also get like, the, the famous stare down, which we've seen on God knows how many different promos and start to the program starts, all that sort of shit. Um, but no doubt from what I remember, if it's... Because he goes for like, the cover and get them pulls, there's a whole pull him up, like, confident. Oh, I've got him beat, but fuck it, I'll inflict more pain. I yeah. It's just meant to, like, build up into the storyline, like... I, yeah. say, I, know, I know what you're saying, I understand why you're, try, why, you know, the, you're thinking that, you know, it is... Uh, you know, oh, oh well, he he wants to punish him. He doesn't want to beat him. He just he wants to like hurt him, yeah. and then beat him. But why don't you just win the match and then attack him after the match, like every heel does on every single SmackDown? Or why bother covering him? Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, you know, at the end of the day, win the match. So then you've done one of the things that you set out to do, and then you can just beat him down with chair, and you've got no worry about not winning the match, innit? Mm. Yeah, that would make sense. I'll tell you what else that made sense as well, what you brought up just before, was Kane no-selling. Yeah, which was, was cool. It, it fitted in his character, and I put in my notes as well, look, Willie Siegel, no-sells no that make sense. <laughs> <laughs> if you use your brain, you'll know who Willie Siegel is. Oh, I do. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, the, the pace of the match as well, again, like, you know, talking about things that made sense, it was slow. Yeah. And it made sense because of the guys that were in the match. But at the same time, 
because of the guys that you knew who they was, they were supposed to be mirror images of each other. And the way they the way they went about themselves in the match made sense that way because if you look back in the last seven or well, six matches, Taker was like a slow, methodical sort of pace at times, especially going back to his very, very early matches. The next thing you know, he'll just throw out a flying clothesline out of nowhere. Yeah. And Kane did exactly that. Doing like the slow, methodical sort of, you know, heavy hitting sort of like, you know, clubs and clotheslines. And the next thing you know, flying clothesline out of fucking nowhere, off the top rope, all sorts. Yeah. He's capable of doing that, just like Undertaker is. Which builds the which again builds on the story of them being each of us equal and being like obviously related. They're capable of essentially the same sort of offense and the same sort of, you know, damage potential. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, it, do, it does. It, it does. It does. It does make sense, and it does. It does fit into the the characters of both of them, really, to an extent. But I don't know. I think for this one, because both Kane and Taker had that air of presence about them, and. You can't really not have Kane no selling if he's going to be doing all the fucking lightning and all that sort of shit. Yeah. And it sort of factors in toward the end of the match. We won't cover that just yet. Um, but yeah, it's, I see what you mean in terms of like the mirror, like similar moves and stuff. Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, the big difference is Taker does a tombstone, Kane does a choke slam. Mm. That, that's basically your difference, isn't it? Really, you both do the flying clothesline at this point. You know, the, it's power based moves. Yeah, and you can see if you look further on into the career, they both even end up doing the last ride. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, Kane less so, but yeah. One thing I would note is I actually think Kane's punches are better than Taker's as well. Like I know well, later on, it's it's not happening that. R- as of yet, but later on, the best pure striker in the WWE. Bullshit. Yep. Kane's throat thrusts are better. <laughs> yes. But for that quote, he's coming up in, in that, about two two matches. Yeah. Um, where's my camera? Soup bones. Oh. I'm somebody to even do the quotation fingers there. Soup bones. Yeah, it's bullshit. Fucking well annoying. <laughs> so... Oh, God. Well, I was going to say also, from noting, noting on this match in my notes, I think this is probably the first Mania match where Taker doesn't do the whole thing where he goes over the rope and lands on his feet. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Yeah. But what would have made, do you know what would have been better if Kane did it? True. Um, I, also, I don't think there was an old school in this match. I don't Which think there was good. either. I'm just looking through my notes very, very quickly, but I do not see the words old and school put together. No. Good. So there is a bit of agility shown from Taker though, where he hits the ropes. He ends up on he jumps, leaps on the Kane's shoulders. Mm. Uh, sort of that thing like, what the fuck's he gonna do? But then Kane just sort of slams him down. Just sort of, sort of, oh just, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, was this match don't I don't was it no DQ though or was it standard? No, no it, was it was a standard, standard match. It was a standard match because Kane starts like destroying the announce table, and I have no idea why. Well, there's like the whole bit of the ring steps, like about halfway through the match, where you put your boots like Kane sandwiches take on the ring steps. It's like, again, you, you got the old thing you can get out of it. If it's no DQ, it's referee discretion. Yeah. There is that. So, there's a way around it, I suppose. If obviously, the referee wanted to let it go because obviously it was like a blood feud, X, Y, and Z. So you could maybe, say that. Maybe it was no DQ and it just doesn't mention that it's no DQ. It could be one of them where they never, you know, the, the commentary doesn't pick up on it. Mm. Yeah, there is possibility of that. But... Hmm. So we're moving to the finish? Yeah. Uh... Can do. 
So they go through the, the announce table. Uh, Kane gets Taker back inside. Taker du- hits the ropes, ducks the clothesline, and goes for Tombstone, but Kane reverses it into his own. But only that's two. Uh, Taker applying the choke slam. Yep. And uh, Taker, Tombstone catches Taker, but Kane kicks out at two. Leg drop from Taker, another Tombstone, but Kane's again out at two. Yeah, just while I remember on that on the tombstones, um, obviously Kane kicking out of the tombstone was the first time someone apparently kicked out of the tombstone. Did say that on commentary? Yeah. Um, Taker goes to the top rope and delivers, delivers a flying clothesline, and then hits a third tombstone, which gets the free count at seventeen oh five. But if you uh, notice as well, Kane kicks out straight after the three. Yeah, yeah. Like. If, Pretty much both tombstones, he goes to cover and whatever, and you just get straight back up. Yeah. And then on the third one, kicks out. Yeah. Uh, to be fair though, I don't mind that because it made Kane look strong, which yes, it did. was kind of the point. Like, if you weren't going to have Kane win this match, which they clearly weren't, um, they had to make him look strong because at the end of the day, we've so far built him up to a no-selling, murdering. Setting people on fire, demon from hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to take a lot to put him down, which they did. And it looked successful, and it, it? In the story of the match, they literally did just enough to put him down long enough to get the three count. Yeah, and run away. Yeah. But there's, there's no way you should have won this. <laughs> it's, uh, as I noted, I, I sort of put down a like, really good big man match here. Bit slow in the middle, but they did a good job of getting Taker, uh, Kane over to Monster and a serious threat to yeah. Taker whilst keeping Taker's invincibility alive. Yeah, no, they do. It, they do. And like you say, it was a bit slow in the middle, but uh, the, the end is pretty good, to be fair. Yeah. Um, a lot of action, a lot happened in the end. Um, but I just, <laughs> there's no way on earth you should have been booked to win this. <laughs> no mm. way on earth. <laughs> I think if there were the book it the way they did, I think they booked, I think they booked it the right. Uh, I personally think they, if the way they booked it, obviously they had the, the, the that result in mind. That was probably the best way to get that result that they possibly could have put up. I mean, in summary, I put this match was booked brilliantly. While not the most action-packed match, it made both guys look as strong as each other, either man able to win and each, each their equal, which was the basis of their storyline. Yeah, Kate, no... Okay. Kane went on to be one of the main guys on the roster, thanks to matches like this. I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Mm. Like, it, but you know, and I'm not saying that I think the match is booked bad. I don't. I do think they did a good job with the match, but I just think that to me, it made it made more sense if Kane won. Now that's not to say that's mm. not that's uh, you know maybe that's part of me being a bit biased, but because I don't particularly like the Undertaker, um, but I don't know. I just think that the way that you've brought him in, the way that you've built him up, you know, is this undefeatable, unkillable monster type of thing. You know, it, it, it's like. It almost like stops his momentum. No, yeah, I'm not saying dead, but it's just kind of like it's like a like a, like if a train ran into a wall or a sleeping you know policeman, I mean? a sleeping policeman in the road. Yeah, and it's just a bit like oh oh well um yeah, and then they'll spend like the next several months trying to act like it didn't happen, and he'll get beat again and again, and it'll be like oh well yeah, that was kind of shit, wasn't it? Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can see where you're coming from from that. I mean, it's one of these matches where they could have got a similar result no matter what way the match yeah. went, storyline wise. So it wouldn't. If if Undertaker did lose, it wouldn't need much. The storyline what went on from there wouldn't be much different for what it would have been if Taker did lose. No, 
So I can see where you could be from. It was a very, very like it could have gone either way sort of match, and it wouldn't have really mattered. But I would be shocked if the call was made on the day. That kind of it was. It would be that kind of match. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from about that. What did you think, Coxie? Um, I can't remember if it happened, if it carried on afterward or not. Um, but it's it's like for me, it should have like if you take a one here, you should have had a you should have had a follow up at the next pay per view or something where Kane won. Yeah. And then maybe carry it on to a third match or like SummerSlam or whatever and build it up and build it up. Yeah, that would make sense. Nowadays. So, but yeah, it's, I, liked, I liked Kane around this time because like, especially this match, it got him over as a monster, like I said before. And it sort of powered him through to King of the Ring 98 we won the title from Austin. But yeah. Then, Kind of shit on it because the fact he lost it like the night after on Raw. Yeah, so, he did lose it the night after, and that, and that was his only title run for like twenty years. I think he did. I think he got he won Money in the Bank. He killed Rey Mysterio, didn't he? But other than that, yeah, that was pretty much his only heavyweight championship. Yeah. Um, so after the match, Kane attacks and delivers a tombstone and a steel chair. Yeah. See again that, but you see, that that's my point. If he pinned him at the beginning, when he had him down for the free, he could have then just tombstoned him on a chair like he does at the end anyway. Except he would have won. Yeah, just just a bit. There you go. You fucked up, kayfabe. Yep, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but no, Why uh, not? Sco- scores. Um, again, I think it's a solid three, maybe three and a half. Yeah, I've actually given it a two and a half. Um, probably just a bit of a shorter length match. So, one of them. Well, it's got a 17 over five, so. Eh, not bad. I'm going to go with three. Yeah, because it was, a, it, I, for me, you got to think as well, it's not just, a, it, it's not a, a, it's, it was like the groundbreaking match of Kane's career. Yeah, yeah, it does so, kind of set him up for life. Exactly. So, and he, 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 he there's, there's not a bad performance on either side, really. So, and the match wasn't booked badly. So, I can't, I can't keep, I can't, I can't, I can't, even, I can't think why you'd give it less than three. But end of the day, you know, <laughs> each to their own. Yes, indeed. And now we're going to jump forward a year. To the 28th of March 1999. It's WrestleMania 15 with The Undertaker versus The Big Boss Man. Yay. <laughs> now, I heard rumours about this match. I heard rumours about this match and they weren't good. Um, and when I first obviously started watching the match, uh, obviously, well, well you got, obviously, you got to put the pay per view on. Obviously, we're watching it on the network. In the description, the network does not even mention this match. It does not. And it also didn't have time points. Yeah, that was annoying. It's the only WrestleMania so far I've found that doesn't have time points. Well, I've been been watching um, all these on a tablet to do these, and there are no time points on any of them. Oh, well, thanks to be you. (laughs) Yeah. Watching on PS4 and it has time points. I'm trying to watch one on a Roku, on my Roku stick. It's like there's no time points. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. PS4 is. You go backwards and forwards over the pay per view to find the start of the match. Yeah, it's it's not fun. I went on Wikipedia and was like looking at how long the match was. So I was like, right, it's probably around this point in the pay per view. And I managed to just catch the end of the, the previous match. Yeah, that's what I tend to do and then watch it from there. Uh, so yeah, this match was during the essentially during the Ministry Corporation feud. Yeah. Essentially heel versus heel. It was heel versus heel, yes. So. But one was more heely than the other. <laughs> yeah. It's the first street match to have the, stra- the, um, the scratch logo. 
I'm looking for I'm looking for the first uh, of anything. And um, it was the first, obviously, it was the first match where the Scratch logo was used as opposed to the old school. And first sell at, first having the sell at uh, Mania. It was. Yeah. But then we had we had Heel Taker going for McMahon in another great promo. Even if Boss Man wasn't in much of it. <laughs> well, the thing is, the Boss Man is just... It, it, he, he serves his purpose as in he is basically he, he's Vince McMahon's bodyguard. That is pretty much his gimmick. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it, it makes sense that he would be sent out as the minion to fight The Undertaker so that Vince doesn't have to because, well, Vince is like Mr. Burns. Oh, well, yeah. You know, but yeah, the, we can't forget the whole The Undertaker kidnapping Vince McMahon's daughter. So he could marry her, even though she's a child. I was about to say that one of the the best points, although that oh balls, that comes at uh, it's actually backlash. I think leading up to that, so uh, where she gets in the limo, where to, Stephanie? Oh yeah, no, that's after this, isn't it? <laughs> so it happened at backlash. I thought it was like a random episode of Raw or something, but so on the best end ever. <laughs> Yeah, it was so ridiculous, though. I'm going to kidnap your daughter, and I'm going to marry her. But why? I don't know. I'm just doing it because you're my boss. What? <laughs> we have no reason for these storylines. Heels fight heels, because I say so. And then it was uh, Vince behind it all along. Yeah, right. and then it was Vince behind it. So Vince got the Undertaker to kidnap his wife and kill his head of security. Because, wait, what? His daughter. Sorry, kidnap his daughter, yeah. Kidnap his daughter, terrify his wife, and kill his head of security. Yeah, what? as you do. As you what? Do. Why? Just you, can have, you can have maybe why he got, a, he got him back a few years later, bringing DDP in as a stalker. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Fucking hell. Secret in, into 20 storylines. Yeah. <laughs> that was the unfortunate part of DDP's run. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, I didn't like this match. No. no Boss no. Man comes out to no reaction. Because yeah. no, nobody thinks he has a chance. <laughs> Everybody so- just thinks, oh, you're getting jobbed. Mm-hmm. You are the jobber. Well, they think he doesn't have a chance. It's they know he doesn't have a chance. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely pointless. You, you might as well send out a fucking crash, Holly. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. Pants. It was pants. Well, it's pretty much going through the motions up to the point where uh, boss man tries to cuff in takers to the cell. Yeah. But then t- Taker drops to his arse and the cuffs break anyway. I know, which yeah. looks so bad. Most of this match was bad. It was awful. I wouldn't mind, but the big boss man isn't that bad as like a wrestler. But like Taker's the leader of the ministry. He's supposed to be like the main event guy. And you've got him in this like random match in the middle of a pay-per-view. Against a scrub, a guy who fights for the hardcore title at best. Yeah, you know what I mean. That he's a former like world champion against some guy who looks like we got him off the street. Jesus. Let's go for the name. So we got Big Bubba, the Big Boss Man, the Guardian Angel, on yeah. trailer. Yeah. Just, it was just crap. The, oh God, it's hard to talk about. It is because, at the end of the day, like, Bossman attacks Taker with a nightstick. Yeah, I'd expect him to because it's probably the only chance he has, in the hopes that he gets a one lucky shot off and busts him open hard way. Mm. And it's like no, and he tries to cuff him, and they break. And everybody laughed because it made them both look like bums. 
Take it does get busted open, but of course it's Taker, so I'm not selling big boss man shit. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first time Taker got busted over at, open at Mania as well, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> It's the first time Taker lost a shoe at WrestleMania. Exactly. We're, going, we're, do, we're doing this shit. We are doing this shit. I love it. I love it, Paul. Don't get me. I fucking love it. We're Give doing it. this shit. Wait, wait for the next match, you know, Black. First time, first time Taker took a shit at Mania. <laughs> Brilliant. I thought he did that in this match. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh yeah, this match is a steaming turd. Absolutely. Fortunate, the only fortunate thing is it's relatively short. Yeah, it's not long. Um, so yeah, pretty much going to the end. Taker goes for old school, but Bossman, Bossman crotches him. Um, Taker fight gets him with a low blow. <laughs> Eventually, as the crowd starts to realise this is bullshit and turn, turns on it. <laughs> Yeah. Goes for Tombstone, Bossman counters. And goes for the Tombstone and gets the victory at 9.47. Yeah, yeah, kind of from out of nowhere, really. It was like, the uh, match is going wrong pretty slowly, not much happening. A Tombstone win. Uh, 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 okay. But yeah, we... That well, might be audible, maybe. Because the fact I is... Know minutes, like less than 10 minutes that might have been just an audible of like just fuck it to take it home Right, oh, I can't argue with that because at the end of the day the crowd was turning on them Yeah. they yeah, it was... did not care and they did not believe the boss man no, it, was a bit, it was a drizzling shit it was a drizzling shit but then the aftermath happens yeah. oh the match the craziness continues as the brood repel from the top of the arena dropping a noose into the cell Paul Bearer hits the button that raises the cell and hangs the boss man from the top of the arena. Um, Bunkle, Bunkle's jizzing with joy. It's not joy, it's like, why? Why? It was fucking awful. Well, it's like, the brew come down and drop the thing, like the, the noose in, but it's like, why did it take all three of them to rappel down to do this? It's like, Why? And the, and then they they f- literally faff around with their with their wires, and then oh right, big boss man's getting shit. The fucking hang of the big boss man. Oh shit. Oh shit. It, yeah, he's selling that quite well. Oh, I can see the wire. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, imagine if you're in the arena. I bet it's quite difficult to actually see that wire. Oh, so yeah. you'd actually be sort there like, I've just watched a man get hung. Well, that's disturbing. Hey, Johnny, you're 10. How do you feel about this imagery? Ah! Exactly. <laughs> actually wondering what, like, um, boss man's... Oh, there you go, Paul. First time someone was hung at Mania. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Partially yeah. one of the boss man's like thoughts were though if we'd head at that point where you're sort of there like right I've got I'll like, like just be here like looking unconscious. Um what do I do? Like they got me down now. Shit. What's happening? When I open my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Have, it's... Have, I, have I still got Bischoff's number on speed dial? <laughs> it, it, it's 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 actually hard to watch. If you if you suspend suspending your disbelief, you've just watched a murder. Do you know what I mean? That's what they're trying to say to you. You've just watched somebody get murdered. Literally murdered. You just watched an execution. Yeah. You've (laughs) just watched a fat middle-aged man get executed for attempting to stop a man from stealing a girl. A young girl. For doing his job. Come on. For doing his job. Oh, no. (laughs) Shit the bed. (laughs) Fucking hell. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Michael Cole on Michael Cole on commentary. Is this symbolic? No, he's dead, you fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Is this symbolic, you fucking prick? It's a symbol for things to come up. Where to, Stephanie? <laughs> 
is I'm just is, Oh, sorry. Someone, <laughs> someone needs to hack the network and put in that bit afterwards. Like that kid on the Simpsons where he's going, stop, stop, he's already dead. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, I'm usually very good at suspending my disbelief and that's how I can watch wrestling. You know, I'm, I'm, normally I enjoy like the craziness in wrestling and stuff, but, that was hard to watch. Like, even though I can see the wire, even though I know he's fine and probably was on Raw the next night, which I'd love to see how they fucking explained it when he returned. <laughs> if anything, the zombie. The, ba- the boss man has such a strong neck. If it was me, I'd probably come out in like a, even like a neck brace. Just come to the holder like this going. <laughs> oh, like, Uncle can see he's pissing himself off and that. I mean, like, wheel, getting like wheeled out by... Fucking Ken Shamrock or something. <laughs> <laughs> Get wheeled out by Linda. He's got this secret love triangle. <laughs> they could have done like a whole bit with it where they have like him and Ken, Sh- like Ken Shamrock wheeling around. And he's like, Ken, I got in the bathroom. And he's like, I'm not helping you. <laughs> like, it's you there of like Ruth. So going, you're going to, bro, bro, you're going to go to the bathroom and Ken's not going to help you. So you're going to shit yourself, bro. It's Pop unfortunate. Day. That's how I actually think they might have gone with that. What I would have preferred is if they put him in like, well, basically if they put him in a bunch of makeup to make him look like a zombie and had him walk out to the ring like a fucking zombie from then on. I think that would have been brilliant. He's, he, he is dead. He's an undead. Oh my God, he's the Undertaker from 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and literally do the old Undertaker gimmick. <laughs> Yeah, that would be fucking amazing, let's be fair. <laughs> the power of the urn. Yeah, fuck it. Bear is still walking around with the urn. It's like, I've got two urns, motherfuckers. <laughs> One in each hand. One in each hand, or he keeps holding them up to his chest like boobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> out of coffins or whatever one one I mean I've put very we- mere match second worst so far after Gonzalez the rumours I heard were true and the match was awful the match itself did not require the hell in the cell and was only there to set up the crap hanging spot at the end of the match the match was a dud and felt like a thrown together match to get Undertaker on the card you two are generous I gave it like half yeah I felt like I was generous with that but I gave it a one I think I gave Snooker a one so he's looking he's consulting I am consulting hang on it's the wrong piece of paper fuck's sake oh hang on wait 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 wait. oh no I gave I gave Snooker I gave Snooker zero so yeah yeah maybe I was well no I gave Jake one I gave Jake one so yeah, this has to get this gets a one. Actually, no, this might be worse than Jake. No, I'm sticking with my my original result. I have to give it a one. Just because I'm guessing it was something I was never seen before. You know, the death of a man. <laughs> well, was it symbolic? Fuck knows. To <laughs> me. I'm gonna make a quick note of something Bunkle said for a future topic. Is oh. it symbolic? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> symbolic moments in wrestling that aren't really symbolic. That's a good one, actually. I'm joking. Yeah. Are you joking? I was going to go look up whenever Michael Cole said this is symbolic on the fucking network. <laughs> Just tap the symbolic and see what comes up. Every episode of SmackDown from the year 2000 to the year 2003. <laughs> what? Oh my god, JBL, is this symbolic? I don't know, I'm wrestling you fucking brick. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so let's jump ahead to April Fool's Day 2001 because Taker missed 16 due to an injury. Yeah. And that's the last mania he's missed to date. Oh god. So until had... this year, until this year, he's yeah. not coming back this year. 
No. Yeah. No, don't There's say yet. Rumours. Um, so yeah, April 1st, 2001. It's The Undertaker versus Triple H. Yeah. First is Badass. Yeah, first Badass Taker. First, yeah. Is it the first one on the bike? Yeah, the first one on the bike where he has a mode of transport. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, he had he had he had the 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 chariot. Oh at, yes, at I, nine. Forget. I forget, I forget. But it's also out. <laughs> yeah, I blocked that one out. Yeah, that's that's true. Post traumatic stress disorder. Um, <laughs> but it's also the first WrestleMania match where Undertaker wrestles a member of the Click. I oh, know it's not. He wrestled the uh, Diesel. Take that back. It's the first time when he's wrestled somebody who had a live entrance. Yes, yeah. this is true. Oh, Motorhead, we're going to kick your ass. We don't know the lyrics. <laughs> they suck. Yeah. Well, at least at WrestleMania they did. But this, oh, this, this match had one of my favourite commentary teams of all time, Heyman and Ross. Yeah, always. The best commentary team of all time, yeah. hands down. There is no argument. I fucking... It's worth if you could just shut your eyes and just listen to the commentary. It's worth it alone. Yeah, they, uh, they are the best because they 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 hate each other. <laughs> yeah, that that's why it worked. Yeah, that's that's why it worked. So the story uh, the story leading to the match, uh, Trips has beaten everyone in the business apart from Undertaker. That that's a. Good story, though. That is yeah. a good story. That is, uh, I am the best in the world. I've beaten everybody. Well, you've not beaten me, boy. That is that is really good. That's the old horse telling the young horse, you know, fuck off, get off my turf, bitch. Sorry, dog, dog, because he's the big dog in his yard. Yeah, all the Roman Reigns terminology. Had he, had he brought in the yard at this point? I, didn't think he, I thought that was later on. The yard came in. Well, yeah, I don't think he'd started calling it that then. But, you know, I, I was using the metaphor. I was... Oh, you mean, yeah. I, I was just but using he, the metaphor. <laughs> but he did use his yard not long after this. Mm. So... Is this, yeah. Was this when he was still going out the whole American band? This was before Rolling, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, no, I think Rolling yeah. was here on this, wasn't it? Was Rolling on this one? Rolling might have been on this one. I think it was. This was the time when it was still like the flannel shirt, like the jean shirt thing. Denim shirt. Yeah. yeah. Denim shirt. Denim jean. But you know what I mean. But I think it was. Uh... Yeah, I really like this match. <laughs> yeah, we've we've gone over this before. Um... We have. When we covered WrestleMania 17. Which, if you haven't listened to our episode about WrestleMania 17, check it out. It's a really good one. Yeah, it was... Um... Yeah, Taker was out to rolling. And, as you say, I put, in my opinion, a very underrated version of The Undertaker. Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day. When we, once, when we set ourselves this, like, this mission, shall we say... I was trying to think about, you know, my favourite Undertaker. You know, what what was the Undertaker that I enjoyed watching the most? And, like, I, I wasn't there to watch the majority, like, the 80s, early 90s stuff. You know, it was that was a bit before our time, really, where you could get into wrestling. But Ministry Taker, a little bit too weird for me. I just think Badass Taker is the, the Taker I like the best. I don't like the name Bugger Red, you know, but I and think... Nobody knows the meaning to. No, unless you look it up. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's just, it's not for me. It, it is, you know, I think it is the best taker. It's the most believable taker. You know, oh, right, well, he's, he's, a, he's a, you know, he's a motorcycle mm. gang leader, whatever. Uh, yeah, okay, I can buy that. I can buy that they would call him The Undertaker is like a code name. It, it kind of makes sense to me. And, you know, he was still, he was having better matches, longer matches. 
A more yeah. varied, more varied move set as well. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't do it for very long. It's my only issue, because then, it, I mean, by, well, as we'll come on to by the, the what we'll get, maybe four years of this, and then he goes to that weird in between taker that I don't like and don't understand. <laughs> Was that uh, the big evil? Or Dead Man. Yeah, it was Big Evil, wasn't it, I think? It's the one where he came out like the old Undertaker. He, like, he used to co- he, he started coming out like the old Undertaker did, mm. but dressed like Big Evil with like the leather pants and the big... Uh, not Big Evil. Dressed like the... Dressed like the American Badass Taker with the, the MMA gloves on and stuff. And it was like, yeah, well, the Undertaker wouldn't really come out dressed like that, would he? Well, round round sort of mess with me twenty. Yeah. Off there, I think. He had about a hiatus till he disappeared and Yeah, so you know, it's just just one of the things that I have to note. Yeah, uh, just what I found here, he take came to the ring, he used at American Badash for only six months and debuted rolling. So he came back at Judgment Day 2000, so yeah, he probably was using Rollwood at this point. Well, yeah, definitely out to Rollwood, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I think Taker goes right right after Triple H pretty quick. Yeah. Triple so H, he... I would say, overselling a bit, maybe? Yeah, the Spanish, t- Spanish announce table lasts about 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, Taker was all mm. over him, really. It was at the beginning, which was quite good. Um, until he goes for old school and gets countered, because that's what happens almost every time he goes for old school. But, yeah, I, just, I think both guys, would, you know, they had a, a reason to to want to win. And it was, you know, it's... It's the standard, I'm better than you, no, I'm better than you. And there's no better story than that, mm. to me. Uh, Hunter does go for a sledgehammer early on, but Mike Kyoto does uh, Taker gets a choke slam, but Trips kicks out. So Taker comes, kills the referee. Yeah. Taker's a tweener at this point, though, really. Yeah, he's, it was, it was, it was, the entire badass... Sort of pers- persona was always tweener. It was never heel. It was never face. Mm. Um, that's at least that's my like. Sort yeah, of it, like... It, it could it could flip the dependent upon who he was facing. Mm. And he but... was never he was never a bad loser unless you were Maven. Well, that's the uh, thing. Yeah. He, it, 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 the character kind of grows as it go along and does become. I guess you'll call it a bad loser at points. Because he does, you know, he he does start like, you know, attacking not just refs, but like people after the match and stuff like that. Or just, you know, like, I mean, we're, we're one year away from the Ric Flair feud where he attacks his son in a shower. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Come on, get him, Rick. Yeah. No, it was. A, it, I say it was a good match. It was a good back and forth. There was a lot of outside brawling. They went into the tech area in the crowd, which yeah, I've still to this day have not seen anybody else do. Mm. You know, um, the and you know, which was, so it was quite. It was quite unique. You get a massive yeah. choke slam off it as well. Oh yeah, choke slam off the scaffold, which is got holy shit chance. Yeah. But, Nice to see, like, like seeing Triple H to, you know, take big bumps and hurt himself. Um, <laughs> and take a, you know, an elbow. Takes an elbow, but the actual note for this spot was elbow dropped by Taker onto Trips. Trips is now deceased. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Kyoto is still deceased because they go back to the ring and Matt Kyoto is still down. Yeah, he's, I've, I've put later on that ref is asleep and dreaming. <laughs> There, there must be nothing better than being a ref. You can imagine how good it is to be a ref in the WWE. You get paid a fortune, and half the time 
you you're on your you're on your you know flat on your face in the middle of the ring just so you're just like having a bit of a daydream you know, yeah like, mm, yeah oh, it's not too bad this i just gotta unless watch you, out for you know the unless your name's paul white is it paul not paul white it's uh what's that referee that did the uh spots in the mid-2000s oh, timmy white or tim, tim white or whatever tim, it was yeah tim, tim Tim White, where he took that fucking huge spot, that huge bump off the hell in a cell. Yeah, well, fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> but, you yeah. know. Fast forward to, like, 2003 with him, and they keep showing him trying to kill himself. Yeah. Oh. At least he got paid for it. Yeah, this is true. But, uh, no, um... so yeah, take your goes for the sledgehammer, but Triple H uses a low blow. Yep. Uh, goes for Sumo Stomp, but Taker counters into his own. Kyoda yeah. uh, still down, and finally starts to come round. Oh he, yeah, Taker goes for the last ride, and Triple H has the hammer, and he bops him uh, when he gets him up. Which uh, <laughs> is gross, but I like that spot. Uh, no, <laughs> I think that was a really good spot. The sound it makes is going to send chills down my spine until it hits. <laughs> when he does, yeah, well, when he does similar with fucking Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Well, I still, I think it, you know, it, I think it was, it set up such a good moment when he go, when he get kicks out at two because Trips goes for the pin, the ref's up somehow, and he kicks out at two, and the crowd goes fucking mental. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, that that was a fucking good spot. That was good. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Uh, take a blades. Triple H has a little bit of offense. Last ride, free count. I was like, yeah, loved it. Finish out of nowhere as well. It was. It finished out of nowhere, but it was a really, really hard hitting, you know, good back and forth match. Yeah, as well. I agree. You know, two, two, of the, two of the guys in their prime, really. It made Taker look great. It made Trips look great. And like he'd try anything to win. Uh, what is most annoying is they ignore this match from now on. Like when he starts doing like the fights with trips and stuff, they just ignore it. It's yeah, like it never happened. It's criminal because it is it the best uh, streak matches. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's better than any of the other Triple H matches. Absolutely. I Way hope, better. And say I've put a good match, great action. Wasn't really a dull moment in this match. So much so, this felt shorter than the boss man match. Even this yeah. was almost twice as long. Probably the best street match so far. Yeah, you're into it from the first second. Yeah, agreed. There's no slow moments at all. There's no, there's not even any build. It's just straight into shit hot action. It had a decent build, I thought, going into it though. Mm. It it did. It, you know, yeah. like you said, that's that story of. I just need to be better than you. Mm. What more do you need? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, Taker gets the win in 18 minutes, 17 seconds. Yeah, didn't feel yeah. like that long. No, fantastic. Yeah, enjoyed it. 100% enjoyed it. I'd say that was a four casket. Yeah, I got four caskets as well. Fours all around. Absolutely. 100% agreed. Yeah. Loved it. Sweet. Now right, so we'll jump ahead to St. Patrick's Day 2002. It's WrestleMania 18. I pick. Yeah. And so we have covered this as well. Find on our feed. Check it out. Yeah. Definitely do. <laughs> uh, it's The Undertaker. This is Ric Flair. Yeah. And it's a first. Oh, I was gonna say no. I'll put first no DQ for Taker at Mania. So either I missed the no DQ for Sid, or this, or Sid was just a legit match and it was referee discretion, like we discussed before. If you want the first ball, it's Taker's first Mania in Canada. Ah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Taker essentially baits Flair into this match by beating up on Anderson, who is his own son. Lovely. Uh, you could say it's the fir- it's Taker's first WrestleMania against the guy uh, who can collect his pension. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, <laughs> and what I researched this this uh, 
the story that matches that also is leads to the brand extension as well. It is. Because yeah. the whole thing with Flair coming in is that he bought half of the WWE from Vince's kids. <laughs> yeah. But, but no, I, I've, to be fair, I, I like the build-up to this match. I like I like the whole idea, you know, that... I, I mean, I can't, I can't remember what the exact reason was that Taker decided to target Ric Flair. I, think he, I don't know whether he refused to book him in a match or something. But he basically is taking, like, Ric Flair the whole time is like, no, I'm not, I'm not fighting you. I'm not a combatant anymore. You know, I'm not a wrestler anymore. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I can't, I, I can't do it. And he's like, well, I'm going to make you do it. And until you do, I'm going to make you pay. So, yeah, beats up Arn Anderson, who they keep referring to as a disabled man. <laughs> and uh, beats up David Flair as well, who's like 15 years, take as junior. Uh, well, from what I've just quickly researched now, it says uh, Undertaker ambushed the Rock during No Way Out, or the build up to No Way Out. Uh, Flair detested Undertaker's actions, and then Flair interfered against with Undertaker in Undertaker's match against The Rock. Um, right. Flair, Undertaker challenged Flair at Met for Mania, but then Flair refused. He's like, "I'm no longer a wrestler." So that's when he starts going after Buddy Arn Anderson and that. Yeah, well, it makes sense then. You like, let say if you know he's inter- he's interrupted in you know interfered in his match and cost him the belt type of thing. You know, it, it he is gonna want revenge. Yeah. Um, but like, I'd like the the one thing that the uh, that you know they keep putting out about this match is it's not a wrestling match. It's gonna be a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Because Ric Flair isn't coming out there to wrestle him and woo and stuff like that. Ric Flair is this man's attacked his son, he's attacked his best friend. You know, he's basically forced his hand and he feels like he has nothing else. He has to give in. Mm-hmm. He has to fight him because it's the only way to stop him, you know, doing these despicable things and attacking his family and stuff like that. It, and I bought into Flair's emotion, really, for it. I was like, yeah, this is a fight. This is something yeah. that you would do. Yeah, You have no option. You have to win this. You have to, you know, you have to stand your ground at this moment. Otherwise, you're his bitch forever. And it's sold in the entrance of Rick, for Ric Flair, where he's obviously normally in a Ric Flair match, you obviously will get the pomps and circumstance. Yeah. He comes into the ring, he does all these like, little things with the robe and shit like that. But before he even gets to the ring, the robe's coming off and he's already pacing and running into the ring. Yeah. You Rick know, it's Flair all goes business. great for him. Yeah. Like, and it's like. Yeah, you would, because he has he can't he can't afford to you know it's not a game he can't afford to back off. This guy's like you know this guy's a, a monster really compared to Ric Flair. Ric mm. Flair's a sixty year old man. Yeah, this guy's six foot ten, three hundred and ten pounds of you know American badass as his build, a bugger red. Yeah, Ric Flair's six years old. He's not been an active wrestler for so many years. He's got to go for it. It's his only option, and I fucking loved it. Mm. Fucking bugger head. Fucking bugger head. <laughs> when I uh, say Flair assaults Taker, goes to the outside and just uh, you know just over the announce tables, yeah. and Taker sells like a boss. He does. This is Taker's best job of selling. Yeah, I really think it is. You know, say, he does. Sorry. Sorry, mate. So Flair's all over him. Yeah, the beginning of this match. Flair, I mean, Flair's. It seems to point. Flair is no selling. Mm-hmm. Flair's no selling stuff like like he, like he just. It's like again, he just knows he can't afford to let go off. He can't he's, afford to do it. Yeah. If any, if anything, he's selling the fact that he's enraged. Yeah, and he's he's that enraged he can't feel the pain. Yeah, it is. It's well. really, really good psychology. Really good, and you know, and take a selling it like shit i wasn't expecting it you know type of thing and yeah, he no. wasn't ready he just wasn't ready for this you see it rattles him it, look, it, it looks yeah. like it he, rattles him yeah he thought it was going to be a walkover which he would i think it's like you said it was it was taken that wanted the match in the first place What's yeah but like? take take a thought it was a powder puff match though didn't he 
Yeah, that's what I mean. Is sort of like take, like take a one in the match, but then Flair's come in like like he's just down the fucking smell of ice. <laughs> <laughs> he's had a smell of ice and a four loco, like done a line of coke and gone right. Let's go. Yeah, but it's fucking brilliant. And I mean, the, to a point where I mean, we're not even that far in the match, but Flair comes off the apron, gets caught and smashed into the ring post, mm. and it was like, yeah, that would stop him. That would, you know what I mean? That's like a, you know, just for the beginning of the match, showing Flair's emotion and how amped up Flair is and how much he feels like he needs this. Yeah. And then to take a resort into something like that to stop him, you know, to just to stop him in his tracks and get a breather type of thing. I thought it was extremely well done. Really, really well done. I fucking love this match. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't really add more to that. I think you've like. I, I mean, I was just talking about like the first couple of minutes, but I just, yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, well, to be fair, there's like there is the bit. Uh, he's like Flair gets a chop in, but then gets caught. Gets caught with a right hand mid woo. Yeah. Uh, fires him into the corner for the flare flip, but he can't get over, so they repeat it. Yeah, there is that. It's open as one into a boot. It's like, pretty decent spot, that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. But, that, I mean, again, you can forgive some of it. Like, Flair blades so quickly. <laughs> and deeply like, as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I pretty much I pretty much ignored the commentary, I'll be fair, because I, I, I do get sucked in a little bit. Well, um... All of you really listening out on commentary is JL lets everyone know that Flair isn't in the prime of his career and that he's north of 50. Yeah, well, I say, but yeah, that's, that, to be fair, that's, that's a good piece of commentary. That's, again, that's, you know, that's putting forward how, you know, how much of an underdog Flair actually is. Mm. You know what I mean? And to be seeing Flair the way that he is and trying to put up this fight, how, you know how much desire he must have, and to do that type yeah. of thing. But the blood coming off Flair, I fucking love it when Flair blades. It's <laughs> sick every time. It yeah. just gets in his hair. It's it everywhere. Get, it gets everywhere as well. There was a, like a spot where, um, uh, with Flair's obviously doing chops in the corner, and then take a fight's back. And next thing you know, you look at the camera angle. And there's blood all over the lens of the camera. Yeah. Coming from Flair's head. It's like, Jesus yeah. Christ. I mean, how, how, what's he done? What's he done? Fucking sliced an artery or something? Probably. Yeah. Either that, he had a paracetamol before or whatever, an aspirin. <laughs> yeah. But it was blood everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Superplex by Taker. Oh, yeah. Well, because he pulls him up to continue the beating. Yeah, yeah. which made sense as well, because that's all Taker wants. You know I mean? Yeah, he just wants to beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And he pretty much just continues to beat on Flair and pull him up at every every count. Yeah, I mean, Flair's not putting any offence in at the minute, is he? So the only thing I've put to note is King's commentary is awful. But yeah. I'm assuming that's standard Jerry the King coming out with something about, you know, Flair being old. It's also at this point. Lola point blank asked JR what a bugger red is, but we don't get an answer. Because nobody fucking knows. If you look it up, it's just southern slang for boogeyman. Right, okay. So say that then. <laughs> um, Taker goes for old school. Yeah. Uh, uh, Flair fights, fights back. Yep. The two chops are counted into a sidewalk slam. Yeah, I say Flair doesn't actually really do any moves in this match. He is just punches and chops. But that's a sign of a dis- desperate man, isn't it? Exactly. exactly yeah. What he's, that set again helps sell his. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. <laughs> it really is. Um, at this point, though. Uh, I think Taker goes for the pin after the sidewalk slam and Taker gets frustrated that Flair kicks out. And, we don't yeah. and then goes to grab the... 
Oh, Flair goes to grab the lead pipe off Taker's bike. Yeah. And, and nails Taker, busting him open. Mm. Yeah, he does. So. Flair gets like a, a sign, I assume from near like ring area. But um, Taker gets a choke slam. Yeah. But, which ends up with, but then Flair gets the low blow in the figure four. For two, because you get pinfalls during the figure four, of course. But the one move, the one move that Flair does is his des- is a, his finisher out of desperation. That's the one what you'll call actual wrestling move that he does, mm-hmm. and it is purely because he has got nothing left. Absolutely, love it. <laughs> Chokes slam by Taker two, and oh, Taker kills Little Nate. Yep. Ref Def. Ref Def. Arm pops up with a spine buster, which, again, I think that was really cool. Like, just a nice little tribute in there. Yeah. You know? But again, it only gets two, and take a kills on who blades. For, from what yeah. I'm assuming he bladed because he was one punch. And, uh, yeah. walks in the dragon sleeper. Oh, I hate that. That's a sick looking move. <laughs> the dragon sleeper. <laughs> Oh, and JR on commentary, like, he's got a surgically repaired neck, god damn it. Like, oh no, don't tell me about how he's disabled again. Yeah. Yeah, but he does, of course, because, you know, got to bring up the, but- you know, mm. big up the brutality there. Um, you can see chair by, Fla- chair by Flair. Yeah. Big Into boot. A- big boot by Taker. Then Taker goes for the last ride, but it's botched. Yeah. Twice, so instead goes for a tombstone. Yeah, I have always thought it should end with a tombstone anyway. Yeah, I know we ended like the last the last match with the last ride was yeah. Yeah, yeah, seventeen. But the last ride was never. Don't don't get me wrong. It was over, and it did look pretty good. But you got to think about your opponent here. You know, the guy is an old man. He's been out here for eighteen fucking minutes. Bleed, piss in blood for fucking 17 of them because he's Ric Flair. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you've got, to, you've, got, you've got to, you know, bring back your expectations there, lad. It's yeah. part, part of my having that is, it's like, you're mid card, you've got a fucking bright red patch of Ric Flair's blood on the, on the, on the mat where you've got like another five, six matches to go or whatever. Yeah. I still don't have a problem with that. It should look like there's been a war in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I suppose. It's like yeah, the, it's sense. like in the UFC. If the very first match of the night on the prelims that nobody watches is horrific, horrific and bloody, they'll go back and fucking watch it. Yeah. Because you can see how much blood's in the ring. I'd rather see that than a fucking decision. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it's a fair point. Yeah. Uh, Taker gets the win in 1845. So, yeah, I, 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 again, can't say enough about how much I enjoyed this match. I preferred 17 with hate with Hunter rather than Flair. I wasn't over keen on this match as much. I did pref- I, don't get me wrong, I did prefer the Triple H match from 17. I do, I do prefer it. But I just think that it's just because it's, a, it's, a, it's booked exactly how it should be booked. Mm. They could quite easily have made this and tried to make this into a wrestling match, which would have been shit, because there's no way on earth that Ric Flair is doing wrestling moves in there with a guy half his age, twice his size, and who's beat the shit out of his son and best friend. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I I get the story and the psychology behind how the match was done. But that and that's that's what appeals to me so much about this match because you don't see matches like that. Mm. It doesn't happen, and this time it ha- not only did it happen, it was fucking great yeah. because they booked it right after it. So, this is also the match I think uh, as Paul first noted to me, where Taker gets in his bike to leave and starts counting on the fingers. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah, he does the ten on the fingers. So it's that it's almost like the first time that Taker's actually acknowledged the streak. Himself. 
So, any more thoughts, Paul? Paul's gone. Let's get him back in. Hello, I lost the signal. Ah. I don't know what happened. Neither do I. I was just asking you had any more thoughts on Flair Taker. Ah, uh, just um, yeah. To be honest with you, I didn't really know what to think of this match. I mean, the parts of it I thought were great. Part of it, so I was like, meh. Uh, but like I could say no real spot sticks out as to say like it was a WrestleMania sort of like moment sort of thing. So, but yeah, it was it was okay. I mean, I didn't I didn't enjoy it as much as the last match, but yeah, yeah that's, that's right. what we both said basically. Um, but I did say due to this, we can well, obviously take even even take us now acknowledging the fact that it was cause it was the end of this match that Taker used you know counted down the the wins on his hands. We just noted noted that, and I was like, I was like, there he was on quiet, and it's like. Oh, he's he's gone. He's been disconnected. So yeah, I got yeah. disconnected because my computer is fantastic. Um, <laughs> we have even take us acknowledging it now. So for me, it's officially at this point become a thing. So now, obviously, I think the streak's officially sort of like being acknowledged. Mm. Yeah, so, that's what we said. It's noted. It's like it's the first time he's actually acknowledged it. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'll go with. And, um. Have you given it caskets yet? No. No, not yet. So, for caskets, I would give this... I'd give this a three, because the action was all right. Yeah, I'm going to go with three as well. See, I, I gave it a four. Though I said that, I didn't quite enjoy it as much as I did the last match. I, I just think it's perfectly done. I don't, I don't think that you could book this match any other way. And make it believable. I think this was the perfect booking of this type of match that should be a fight. Yeah, it makes sense. So uh, I just yes. go by it short purely by the fact that I didn't enjoy it as much as the other match. Yeah. Um, and I'm putting that. I don't know. I'm, I'm possibly putting it down to the limited ability of what Ric Flair was ha- had at this point in his career. Yeah, no, that's the. Uh, so, that, I don't know. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm probably. I'm probably being a little harsh, but. Well, no, I, I completely yeah. agree. You can't ignore that. Mm. You know, but that's again. That's. That's what I mean. I don't think you could have booked it any other way because it wouldn't have made any sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I'm down with that. But I'll, I'll stick with me three because, like I say, for the for the reasons I've already given. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I can't remember how did we do it last time. Did we sort of... So we did like an average of the five that we'd watched. Yeah. watched. That's what I was, yeah. So, so I'd say on average, you're probably, you know, it's probably about a three for the past five. For the five. A three out of five. Yeah. That's it. For the three, the, for the, for the three that we've just done, mathematics, say 2.6 from me. So about it's about about there or thereabouts, then, aren't we? Well, yeah, I... I just I think there's two really really good matches that you should check out, and then Agreed. there are three matches. One of which the this the the Sid match was good, but you know, and the Kane match was, it was all right, you know. But I I I wouldn't sit here and say you must go check those out. Do not watch the Boss Man match because it's no. garbage. Yeah, it's a load Definitely. of shit. If, if you're going to do anything, check out the Triple H. Check out this Triple H match because it's better than any of the other ones with Triple H. Check this one out. I'm, I'm sorry. Because they nodding. don't talk about yeah. it. They don't talk about it. And they should. It's a crying shame. Yeah, it's a, it's a great match. 100%. Yeah. Out of the three Triple H matches that he has in, his, in the street, that is the best one. Easily, yeah, definitely. I'll go with that. Well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's four matches in it now, we, but they don't talk about this one, so. Mm. So there you are. Yeah. There we go. The streak six, three to ten. Yeah. 
Next time, it's 11 to 15. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Right, you might as well give yourself some plugs, boys. Go on, Booker, you go first, mate. Well, if you've enjoyed listening to my voice as much as I enjoy listening to my voice, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite a lot, you can find me on the Gunpowder Treason No Plot podcast, a weekly D&D podcast where I play the Dragonborn Paladin Rogar. You can find them on all good podcast providers, and you can follow them on Twitter at Treason No. And one day, if you fancy meeting me, I may be in the Red Scar Cafe on Red Scar Business Estate in Preston, Lancashire, the UK. Europe for now. <laughs> <laughs> and yes you can find me also on the rad live podcast uh you can find us on facebook at on www.facebook.com forward slash uk rad podcast we are on apps with at uk rad podcast on twitter you can find us on all the good podcast catching sort of podcast sort of apps like spreaker itunes podbean stitcher and other places like that. And, yeah, if you, you know, you're inclined in sort of like the, what's it, chaotic evil kind of way, you could also um, catch uh, my alter ego, Steve, at um, Steve GTNP, where, um, yeah, he, he doesn't really rate Rogar as a hero. He just... <laughs> <laughs> he just, yeah, and, and yeah, just thinks he's a bit of a... Yeah, a bit of a twat, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A twat in a really shiny hat. <laughs> and, of course, you can find our main pod, the Lost Start of Podcast, and all the podcast providers, Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, the usual places, and there was a Lost Art of Wrestling, which we brought to you today on all the podcast providers. Also, find us on Facebook, Lost Art of Wrestling, at twi- on Twitter, at LAOW Podcast, and uh, you can email us at lostartofwrestling at gmail.com. Yes. So, for the Lost Art of Wrestling... I've been Coxie. I've been Billy the Boy Bunkle. And I've been the Flaming Grill. And this is the podcast we ask, who better than Canyon? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the fucking radiator's on. Just burnt me head. <laughs>